Radio Now 100.9's Indie Connection with Emily Matheny. Hello, I'm Emily Matheny, your host. On March 5th, our sister stations, 1067 WTLC, AM 1310 The Light, and Hot 96.3 were part of a radiothon to benefit St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. The hospital is located in Memphis, Tennessee, but serves children around the world through freely sharing their research and discoveries. Since 1962, the childhood cancer survival rate has gone from 20% to now more than 80%. Stephanie Dillon is the Regional Development Director for ALSAC, which is the fundraising organization for St. Jude. She was here during the Radiothon and had a chance to talk with me a little bit about St. Jude and the impact Radiothons and other fundraising has on patients and their families. Stephanie, can you tell us a little bit about what you do with St. Jude? Yes, I um, am the Senior Regional Development Director, which is a fancy way of saying that I do fundraising for St. Jude in the state of Indiana. And one of the cool events you get to do is with the radio stations. Yes, I get to do uh, many radiothons um, across the country, rock, and then with WTLC, gospel, and urban. Excellent. And for someone who's not as familiar with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, can you give a little backstory? Yes. So St. Jude Children's Research Hospital was opened in 1962 by our founder, Danny Thomas. Um, And his main focus was that no child should die in the dawn of their life due to childhood cancer. Um, And we have kept that focus going. Um, Over the last uh, 50 plus years, we have taken the overall childhood cancer survival rate from 20% to 80%. And the most common form of childhood cancer, which is acute lymphoblastic leukemia has gone from 4% to 94% in survival rate. And then not only does St. Jude Children's Research Hospital deal with uh, childhood cancer, cancers, there's also blood disorders. Yes, we deal with blood disorders. We um, work actively on sickle cell um, and have since our doors opened. It was our actual first grant from the federal government. Um, and we are currently working on a cure. Um, in addition, we are looking at things like childhood ALS, um, cystic fibrosis, and a few others that we can maybe help impact. And one of the cool things about St. Jude is that it is a research facility. Can you talk a little bit about the research part? Yeah. So the cool thing about St. Jude is it is a research facility that also treats patients. Um, And so that enables our doctors that are treating a patient to go, you know what, this isn't working and jump right over into the lab and try to figure out the next thing. Um, If you go by uh, St. Jude at night, you will see the research lab lights are on because our doctors are in there 24 seven. Many of them are so passionate that they give a lot of their own time trying to figure out the next cure and the next step for each of our patients. And um, in our meeting we had uh, with all of our radio stations, WTLC is one of our sister stations to Radio Now. Yes. Um, You mentioned with Sickle Cell the current president of St. Jude, what it, what is his goal? His goal is to cure sickle cell. Um, like I said, it was the first one of the first things that we tackled through federal grants. Um, we have cured it um, in patients, but it, that requires a bone marrow transplant, which is very um, risky. And so it, they are currently looking at how do they replicate that in a format that is safer for our patients. Excellent. And With St. Jude, no family ever pays for treatment, travel, or anything, correct? Correct. Um, Because of the donations we we receive through our events, we um, don't have to charge our families. Um, And that means, you know, for instance, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the most common form of cancer, it's over $500,000 treatment plan. Um, And our patients don't ever see that bill. One of the other really amazing things is that the patients who come to St. Jude, it's from all 50 states and it's from worldwide. It is, correct. So we see, um, we actually have over 50 patients come out of Indiana alone. Um, So we see patients worldwide and um, there is uh, nothing that can stop you from coming in. If you need to be at St. Jude, um, it doesn't matter where you're from, what your religion is, what your race is or your ethnic background, you're going to come to St. Jude. Excellent. Kind of tapping back to the research. So as the researchers are finding these new discoveries. How often is there something from St. Jude, the discoveries? Very often. Um, uh, we freely share our discoveries. Um, unlike many research hospitals, we don't patent our research and we don't sell it. Um, and therefore, that allows us to continuously blast out the information that we're learning. And if another hospital takes it and takes that research to the next step, that's great as long as we're curing childhood cancer. And then... Um, the way that St. Jude operates, where does the money to fund the hospital come from? So 78% of every um, dollar goes directly to our patients, which means um, 
we are very heavily run by donations. Um, in addition, 78% of our operating costs come from donations. Our founder, Danny Thomas, um, once said that he'd rather have a million people give a dollar than one person give a million dollars. And if you look at our average donation, it sits around $42 a person. That's amazing. Yeah. And how much does it take to run the hospital every day? Um, at this point in time, it's over a billion dollars a year. Um, to, and that includes research, the treatment, the travel, um, as well as making sure that if there is a catastrophe, the patients that are currently there will still be treated. Excellent. And part of the Radiothon, what you're here for currently with our sister stations, WTLC, AM and FM and Hot 96.3 is to bring people in to become donors. Yes. Yeah, so what we're looking for specifically for the Radiothon is what we call our Partners in Hope. Um, that is a $20 a month on a credit card donation. Um, and they really are the backbone of the hospital. When our other big donations may wax and wane, the Partners in the Hope are always there and they help us keep the hospital doors open. And it's a $20 monthly donation. Yes. And you get a really cool shirt. You, you can do. check them out <laughs> on um, on our Instagram. You can see Julie wearing it. So go to Radio Now 100.9 on Instagram and check out Jewel's shirt. It's amazing. Yes. And by being, becoming a partner of Hope, you can go online to WTLCFM.com to sign up right now. And it'll still be counted within our um, Radiothon as well. Yes, that's correct. Excellent. And what is your favorite story? What is your favorite oh. St. Jude story? Gosh, there are so many of them. Um, I would say that one of my favorite stories, um, and it's actually less about a patient and more about the family as a whole. Um, and I heard a story one time from a patient uh, mom, um, and she was talking about they had their daughter there for treatment. Um, and their younger child once came to her and said, Mommy, I wish I was sick. Um, and her mom was like, why? And, she, and the younger child was like, so that somebody will pay attention to me. So our siblings get lost in the process of treating their sibling. Um, and what St. Jude does is works with the family to help make sure that that sibling doesn't get lost. And then they do special days for that sibling. There's a special sibling day where only the siblings get to do the fun activities. And the patient draws and makes a gift for the sibling just to make sure that they know that, yes, they are fighting this battle with their sibling, but they are not forgotten and they are still part of that family. And That's it's just amazing. a really cool way to look at the entire family. Because it's not just the child being treated, right. it's the entire family being taken yes. care of. Yes, they work with the whole family to make sure that family stays whole while that one child is going through treatment. Excellent. And then with um, when you come to St. Jude, mm -hmm. you only, um, you're not treated on an inpatient basis no not if we can help it if you have to be yes absolutely we have 82 beds for inpatient um, but we have several housing facilities because what we want is for patients to be able to go home whatever that home may be for that time that they're in Memphis and be able to be with their family and relax and not constantly be in that hospital um, even though our walls are painted bright and there are a lot of fun activities it is still a hospital when you're a child that can be scary um, so we work really hard to make sure that our patients come in they get their treatment they do their appointments and then they get to go back home excellent and you can go online and help support these families by going to wtlcfm.com it's one of our sister stations and becoming a partner in hope today yes Thank you. <laughs> and th yeah, and thank you very much. <laughs> um, and this summer, do you have any upcoming events? So um, we actually have a no-go gala coming up in the spring. Um, and then our next probably large event is our walk in September, September 26th at White River. Um, anyone can join. There is actually this year new no participation fee, so you can register at no cost. We just ask that you fundraise. It's not a requirement. Um, but you get to come out. You get to meet our patient families. Um, the mayor was there last year. Our presenting sponsor, BC Forward, their CEO is there. Um, and it's just a really fun way to honor our patients excellent and that's september 26th at Correct. white river yes. where can people sign up to register or the no register um sign up that you were mentioned so they can go to stjude.org slash walk indianapolis and they can register there excellent is there anything else you'd like to add um, I think just that St. Jude is a place of hope. And when you make a donation, you help those families that are walking through that door feel the hope and feel like somebody's got their back and is going to help them take care of their child. Recently, I had the opportunity to talk with David Henry Jacobs and Joyce Rogers. They're founding members of the Queer Philanthropy Circle at Indiana University. 
They told me about what philanthropy circles do and how they improve the lives of those they serve. A $200,000 pledge was given by an anonymous donor to the QPC recently, and that would match donations or memberships into the circle. It's a dollar for dollar match that would be used as seed money, and David will give more details about what that seed money will do here in a minute. The deadline to donate is June 30th, 2020. At the start of this conversation, David explains how the black and queer philanthropy circle started at Indiana University. They evolved over the last two and a half years. The first, the Black Philanthropy Circle began. It was an initiative with a handful of our IUF board members who felt that a focus needed to be on um, Black philanthropy. Uh, and out of that, um, one of our trustees, uh, the, the renowned Quinn Buckner, brought up in a foundation meeting that with the BPC, the Black Philanthropy Circle, he truly believed that we should extend uh, these programs to other affinity groups and suggested that a queer philanthropy circle, which was an idea that James Fielding put forward, be created. Uh, and at that moment in a foundation meeting some 18 months ago, is that right, Joyce? Yes. Um, that uh, it, it began and it has snowballed into now. And for someone who's not familiar with philanthrop philanthropy circles, can you explain what they do? Well, they first and foremost, they raise money. Typically, you agree to a certain amount of money to actually be a part of the circle, and you invite other members in. Um, so for these particular circles, we're actually looking at five circles um, when we talk about the diverse giving circles. And so our minimum for each of these circles have been 20 members to start out. Our maximums are 45 members. Um, and we're, neither of the circles are at their maximums, but we're very close. So to be a member of the circle is a $15,000 commitment over three years. Uh, the Queer Philanthropy Circle also has levels uh, that starts at 2500 and goes to $5,000. And is that only open to anyone who went to IU or is part of the IU Foundation? Everyone is welcome. Excellent. And then within the QPC, there has been a gift given. Can you tell us a little bit about the gift that has been given, David? Well, it's an anonymous gift, and that was to, to spur membership um, in two ways, direct contributions for the enterprise, for the work that we will be doing, and also for, um, a mat it's a matching component for new members itself. So if you were to uh, pledge your uh, uh, $5,000 a year for the next three years, that, that amount will be matched, and the total matching amount is uh, $200,000. That's amazing. And what work will be done with the money from the philanthropy? Specifically, uh, that is, we are, we are brand new, and we have many, many ideas, but they will cover the range of activities from something like supporting the creation of uh, associate professors professorships in gender studies to um, developing LGBTQ plus uh, campus centers on all of the um, uh, satellite campuses other than Bloomington and IUPUI where they both have them at the moment. We have enormous interest uh, throughout the state uh, and we really believe that uh, working with our, our branch campuses are, is an exceptional way of getting our word out. Excellent. Joyce, do you have anything you want to add at this point? Well, I'd like, David, can you talk a little bit about the emergency scholarships? Because that is the one initiative that really touches my heart. Uh, certainly, I'd be happy to. The, uh, our first gift, uh, which is, it represents $150,000 from the QPC, is being directed to the um, IU LGBTQ AA Association, which grants scholarships for academic needs and specifically for emergency scholarships when uh, parents or guardians who discover that their uh, wards or children are um, have come out of the closet, uh, we often see in this state and many places where the 
uh, support is cut off immediately for whatever reason. And that can impact the ongoing uh, education of any, any student when their support system has been cut. And we provide emergency scholarships so they can stay in school and make a, a meaningful contribution to the community at large and to the LGBTQ community as well. And I was, I was preparing for this interview, I read about retention rates for people who are LGBTQ. And with this philanthropy circle, do you think that is going to help keep people in, I, enrolled in school? I, with our work with the, uh, with the IU GLBTQ plus AA, um, I, I'm convinced it will. And we see examples of this every semester. Uh, because this is not yet, this challenge has not yet gone away and we'll be supporting the, we'll be supporting the people who have been challenged by these real world problems uh, going forward and that will keep the retention, I believe, much higher than it has been. And then this is going to reach beyond just the main campus in Bloomington and IUPUI. So people who are up north at um, IU South Bend. Yes. And we're working on all of that, but our the focus of all of the circles is to be university-wide, not one specific campus. It's also, the focus is not only students, staff, faculty. Absolutely. Uh, we cover the gamut and supporters. Uh, we, it's a, it's a, it's a, what do you call it, a, a large tent that we want everybody involved in. The marginalization of the LGBTQ community is legion. Uh, it, it's going to continue happening. Um, and we are going to do our best to help mitigate the marginalization. And at some point, we won't be needed in, in the world where the mountains move in the space of a night. Um, we won't be needed. But at this time in our society, um, these programs are essential for ongoing education and support for our students. And we can't stress anymore that um, you to be a member, you can be a supporter of the cause, and we actually welcome that. Um, and we have a very, very diverse group of membership from age, any type of diversity that you can think of um, is a part of the Queer Philanthropy Circle, and we welcome that. Excellent. And how can people give to the QPC and to make that dollar-to-dollar -dollar match? Well, you can actually um, go online and... Um, just go to the website and go to the giving page. And when you give, we can track your giving uh, for, uh, for LGBTQ, uh, specifically the Queer Philanthropy Circle. We're able to track that. And so we also have some mechanisms in place where we're actually measuring so that the public will be able to see what our progress is on those matching donations. The other way you can, um, I don't have Jessica Wootens, but you can call me. My number is 317-840-5469. Uh, you can reach uh, Jay Wooten uh, at indianauniversity.edu. Um, and I'm sure that we'll have Jessica's number that we can actually provide here uh, towards the end of the call. So there's just many, many ways. Call the foundation, say that you're the Indiana University Foundation, say that you're interested in the Queer Philanthropy Circle. We will get you where you need to be to make your gift, and all gifts are welcome for the matching. And so if I'm not able to be part of the Giving Circle right now, I can still give to the match. Absolutely. All gifts are being matched up to a hundred up to two hundred thousand dollars through the thirtieth of June of this year, as well as new members of the giving circle. Their contributions are being matched up to the two hundred thousand dollar mark. Um, through the 30th of this year. It started February 1st, and uh, to be perfectly honest, I think we've got some almost $90,000 in contributions as a result of the match, which is very exciting in a very short period of time, which underscores the fact that there is support in the community for this initiative, as there are for the other affinity circles that are being created at IU at this time. Joyce, did you find Jessica's phone number? I found Jessica. Again, it's Jessica Wooten. She's the Associate Director, LGBTQ and Philanthropy, Indiana University, 812-856-4237. 
812-856-4237 or you can reach her by email again that email address is j wooten w-o-o-t-t-e-n at iu dot edu if i may mention this big tent that we are creating with this circle and other circles it comes out of the initiative for all which is the bicentennial cane bicentennial campaign of Indiana University and for all does not mean white Anglo-Saxon Protestant uh, heterosexual males <laughs> it means a big tent with everybody involved and I encourage all of our listeners if they have any interest whatsoever to contact Jessica or Joyce or the IU Foundation and we will be more than happy to get you to the right location. Excellent. Is there anything else either of you would like to add? I, I just would add that for potential students or alumni uh, that want to get involved, you can. Indiana University has really been recognized numerous times as being one of the uh, top universities uh, that is actually welcoming uh, for the LGBTQ plus community. And so we welcome your calls, whether you want to join one of the philanthropy circles, we welcome your calls, uh, regardless of what you're, you would like to do, because we are interested, we do care. Uh, Indiana University, I mean, Kinsey Institute started at Indiana University. So we've been doing this for a very long time. This is just but another layer of support for the LGBTQ plus community. Excellent. Thank you so much. Was there anything you wanted to add? No, actually, I just want to thank you for this uh, opportunity to speak to the community and uh, share our, our enthusiasm and excitement. Um, and also to tell everybody the tent flap is open. Come on in. <laughs> Excellent. And that was Joyce Rogers and David Henry Jacobs with the QPC, the Queer Philanthropy Circle at IU. Thank you for listening. Next week, I will have a guest from United Way of Central Indiana in to talk about how to get help on your taxes. If you want to reach out or if you have topics you would like me to cover, you can reach me at emetheny, that's E-M-E-T-H-E-N-Y at radio-one.com. Thank you for listening. And please join me again next week. Until then, have a great week. Radio Now 100.9's Indie Connection with Emily Matheny.